All right. So uh, my name is Danny Santos. I am the Assistant Director of Campus Life. Um, I'm here today as part of a new Spotlight series um, for Campus Life and Orientation. Um, today we're going to be focusing on um, library and library services and access and how students can um, make the most of the services uh, during this time. Um, today I have two staff members from the library. Um, Vanessa Arce Sanan, the head of reference, and uh, Rebecca Arzola. Um, she's the student engagement um, librarian and, and also focuses on government information. So um, really want to welcome them um, to really share uh, uh, the knowledge that they have about, uh, about the library. They really are here to support you um, in being able to create um, uh, the most uh, fully informed, um, fully informed um, papers and, and and support your your academic um, endeavors. So, without further ado, I will turn it over uh, to them, and they can uh, speak on all things library um, and, and uh, kind of uh, share the information. Thank you, Denny. Appreciate the introduction. So my name is Rebecca Arzola and I'm the uh, Government Information Student Engagement Librarian and I'm here with my colleague Vanessa. Hi, I'm Vanessa Arcesanati. I'm the Head of Reference at the Leonard Leaf Library. Yes, so today we want to show you guys what you have available to you um, in terms of online resources and also what you can get when you come to the library as the library has reopened as well. And we'll show you our hours and, and things like that along the way. Okay. And if you so have gonna, any questions, mm -hmm. go to the chat, you know, throughout the session. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to start sharing uh, my screen with um, some slides that we prepared with the information for you. So there we are. We already introduced ourselves. Um, let's see. Let's get these moving. Tricky sometimes. <laughs> no, you know it. There we go. Okay. So yeah, welcome to the library. Yes. Okay. So we already introduced ourselves. Now we'd like to get to know you a little bit. So Rebecca has something in store for for that. Yes. So we have a, a poll, um, and it's of these questions. If you can fill it out, I'm going to launch it. The first one is, "What type of student are you?" Um, the second is, have you used the library before? And the third, if you've used the library, what kind of library are you most familiar with? So let me launch that poll. And we can start filling that in. I feel like we should have the Jeopardy soundtrack on while this is playing. <laughs> well, people are taking the poll. I like to give the play by play. I see we have so far 100% freshmen. So welcome to Lehman. Absolutely. And it looks like most have visited a library before, which is great. And public library, you know, like the New York Public Library or the Brooklyn Public Library or Queens Public Library. Okay. So Rebecca, it looks like everybody has responded. Are you going to share the results? Okay, yes. Let me end the poll. I think it shares it. Share results. Okay, so you should now be able to see the responses. But yeah, 100% freshmen, students, 69% of you, so nine out of 13, have visited a library before. That's great. And most of you are familiar with public libraries. Close second is school library and then college library. Uh, some of you have already visited um, college library, which is great. Excellent. Let me stop sharing. Okay. So let's go to the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So as Denny mentioned, um, or I think Rebecca mentioned, um, so as you know, many of you know, the college was pretty much closed and most classes were happening online over the last 18 months. So this semester is seeing a partial reopening um, at the college and also the library. Um, as of now, the library building is open, but only the first floor. Um, and that is accessible with a reservation. Um, and we're also um, allowing limited numbers. So we're not fully reopened yet. Um, hopefully by next semester we will. And, um, and like I said, at the moment, there are, um, you know, this is a breakdown of what's available right now in terms of physical access to the building. Um, and there's a link there. We actually shared these slides with Denny and I hope he can share them with you because we have some useful links in them. So there's a link there to the reservation system that you can use to book an appointment. And basically what's available at the, at the moment um, is study space appointments, computer use appointments, um, appointments to read or scan reserved textbooks, which is a very popular service. And, and also picking up um, circulation books, circulating books means books that you can borrow and take home, unlike the reserved textbooks, which can only be used inside the library. Now, these, uh, this information may change throughout the semester as things, you know, might open up a little bit more. So do please um, keep an eye on our library website. We're constantly updating with any changes that, that may happen. But as of now, uh, September 22nd, 2021, this is what's available in terms of physical access to the library. Um, okay, so we're still relying heavily on our virtual services, the virtual library, which again, for the last 18 months, we operated completely virtually. Um, and this is, a, you know, screenshot of our library website, which is really the portal to the virtual library. And even, and I would like to add actually that even when we fully reopen the building, it's extremely important to get familiar with the library website because it, it gives you access to most of our resources. I mean, we do have physical books and we have, you know, there are computers and tables and material things that exist within the library building and the space, of course, the study space. But the reality is that the majority of our information resources are electronic. So no matter if the library building is open or not, the way to access these resources is through the library website. Um, and I'm just gonna do a very quick um, sort of demo of how the library website is organized. I think it's helpful. And notice I'm just, you don't even have to know the address. I just Googled Lehman College Library. And the first result is the library website. So that's the easiest way to remember how to get there. Um, and, you know, you'll notice our homepage has a lot of information. You know, I can't go over every single thing that's there right now, but I invite you on your own time to explore it, you know, click on things and see where it takes you. Right now, I just want to highlight, obviously, reopening information is located here. So please do keep an eye on that throughout the semester as things evolve. Um, we also have frequently asked questions that we constantly keep updated. So that has a lot of information about, you know, things that we get a lot of questions about. We tend to put them there um, so people can just find the answers by themselves. And then we also have um, the Ask Us feature, which I'm going to click on it. I, actually, I could, are you all seeing the website? Yes. Rebecca, do you see it? I see it, yes. yes. Okay, great. Should have checked before. Um, so I just wanted to point out, um, this is an important part of the website for me. I, like I said, I'm the head of reference and reference basically means it's like the library's customer service, right? So when you have a question, when you need help locating a source or defining a topic or anything that's related to your research for school, um, for school assignments, uh, you can ask a librarian. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that, but it's, if you click on the ask us icon, you'll see all the options that you have for um, contacting us during this time. Okay, so if I go back to the home page, um, the other thing I want to highlight in terms of um, the library, you know, we're about providing access to information and resources, but we also host events and they're usually featured here. So there's an upcoming reading um, by a Lehman faculty member who published a book on COVID-19 and that's happening next week. So you're all invited if you're interested in that topic. 
So, you know, always check out the website to see new things. We has a feed to our social media. Um, and then it has um, a search box here that I will go, uh, Rebecca will go into detail um, a little bit more towards the end of our presentation. But I just wanted to point out that it's, it's the point of access to our electronic resources and also at the moment, our virtual services. All right, let's go back here. Let me see if I can move it. There you go. So I spoke a little bit about reference services. I already sort of explained what it is. Um, so under normal circumstances, you know, pre-pandemic, when the library building was fully open, uh, we had right at the library entrance, the first desk that you see on your right is a reference desk. And there's always, when the library is open, there's usually a librarian posted there, um, basically waiting for your questions. Um, at the moment, that's not working in person yet. Um, so what we have is the library chat. So again, if you go to Ask Us, we have a 24 seven chat service where you can live chat with a real live librarian at any time of day. Um, and it's very simple. You just type in, you don't even have to type in your name. It could be anonymous. You just ask your question and start a chat and there will be a librarian on the other side who will pick it up. Um, these are the hours where Lehman librarians are staffing the chat. At other times, you know, I said it's 24 seven. Um, so at three o'clock in the morning, you can come in and you can get a librarian in another part of the world where it's working hours and they can help you. You know, they're professional trained librarians who are qualified to help you with your research questions when we're sleeping. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's available 24 seven. If you don't feel comfortable using chat, you can send us an email. You can call us and leave a voicemail and we'll return your call. Or you can also schedule, um, request a consultation appointment. That would be a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a librarian. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that later as well. But I just gave you sort of an overview of reference services uh, in person when we go back and then virtually, which is what's um, happening right now. And you have all the hours, all the information here. Okay, all the other different ways of contacting a librarian. And the last thing I wanted to say regarding reference is that, you know, I mentioned that we have that feature where you can uh, request a consultation, a one on one appointment with a librarian. And I wanted to mention, because you might not be aware of this, especially um, since you're new to Lehman, but we have um, all, all of our librarians are as assigned to subject areas that, you know, based on our background and our expertise. So that means that every um, major that's taught at Lehman has a librarian that's assigned to that major, right? And so we included on the list here, um, these are all of our librarians and the subjects that we are responsible for. So that basically means, so I'm the second one there, this is easier to explain because it's me. <laughs> so I'm the librarian for Spanish, French, and um, Latin American and Latino studies, and also for languages and literatures in general. So if let's say you're going to be a Spanish major or a French major or a major of um, you're going to focus on Latin American Latino studies when you're taking those courses in your major and you need help with your research I'm your librarian right Rebecca is a subject librarian for sociology and political science so we have any future majors in sociology and political science Rebecca is your librarian so so just be <laughs> so just be aware of that um, and make use of it. Um, so, you know, these are things that are relevant now, but also thinking ahead to once you start getting deeper into your majors and doing more research, more advanced courses, it's good to keep in mind that you have a librarian who's available to help you. And you can use that form at the top to request a meeting with that librarian. At the moment, we're doing them over Zoom. I suppose when we go back in person, then we'll have the option of doing it in, in person or um, we'll also continue the Zoom option because I'm sure there'll be students that, who will remain online even when the pandemic ends. Um, so yes, I think that's all I wanted. So this is a list of all the librarians. So once you get these, um, these slides, you can browse through and you can also find that information on our website. Actually, let me show where you can find that. Um, so if you go up to the homepage and then you go about, library faculty and staff, you will see the list of librarians there as well. Okay, so, okay, we'll keep, so this is all of them, all of us. Um, and then, so yes, so I'll turn it over to Rebecca, who's gonna tell you a little bit about research guides, which is 
a type of resource that we build? Yes, so we have research guides by subject. So if you're a, a sociology major, we have a, a guide for that, a political science major, African-American studies, biology, education major. We have specific guides that were created by the librarians for that um, subject. And I'll show you that when I show you um, the website again and how to get to OneSearch. Um, the guides can also be found in the research tab in uh, Blackboard. So when you go on your Blackboard account, you'll see uh, the library resources um, on the Blackboard site on the left. It'll say, it'll it's usually like the last link and it says library resources. You click on that and it'll, it should lead you to your subject specific research guide. Okay. And uh, yes, so remote access and CUNY login credentials. Now you'll need your CUNY login credentials to access any of the articles, the electronic books, um, any of the video resources, any online resources that the library provides from our website. You'll need your CUNY login credentials when you're off campus to access those resources. When you're on, in the library or on campus, it'll automatically log you in to all of these resources. Okay, and that's the, the, your first name dot your last name with the numbers at login.cuny.edu. Um, if you have any issues with your CUNY login credentials, please contact the IT help desk. Okay, and you can call them or email them for any of the CUNY login issues. Uh, also the CUNY login is, um, you can also use that to access Blackboard and your CUNY first accounts. Yes, and I just I wanted to add that yes. um, on occasion this has happened, especially um, when students are new, when they're trying to access the library's resources um, and they're prompted to enter their CUNY login credentials, which is the way to access them. Sometimes um, an error message comes up saying unauthorized user. So if that ever happens to you and your CUNY First credentials are working perfectly fine in Blackboard and in CUNY First, but you can't use them for the library's resources, you need to contact the IT help desk and explain, um, you know, share with them the error message you're getting because it's something that they have to address. Sometimes the information in CUNY First and the library access gets sort of out of sync. So if that ever happens to you, um, IT help desk is the are the ones who can resolve that issue. Okay, and um, you'll see this these two prompts when you log in uh, off campus to get uh, an article, an ebook. First, it'll ask you to log in with your CUNY login credentials, and then the second prompt just asks you to to do it again. And then once you log in, you can view the article or ebook. And um, I'd like to show you that. Uh, is that the next slide? Let's see. Oh, well, we have. Um, I want to show you that in OneSearch. Now, OneSearch on the library site is like the catalog. It's as uh, you said before, Vanessa. It's the portal to many, most of all of our resources, our articles, our books, our videos, government resources, lots of things, and you can use the filter results that I'll show you to narrow your search to books. Maybe your professor is asking you I, I, that you need to find five books on a certain topic, you can narrow it to books. Maybe your professor is asking you to find 10 peer reviewed articles. And in your research and your time here at Lehman, you'll learn uh, what peer reviewed articles are. And there are scholarly articles that are academic in nature and usually what professors prefer you to use um, if they request it. And I can show you that uh, limit and filter uh, when we get on the OneSearch um, uh, site. And I think that's it. That's the next one. So I'd like to show them the site. So I'm gonna share my screen. Is there anything you wanted to add, Vanessa? No. No, oh, okay. I just stopped sharing so you can. Okay, great. Okay. So do you all see the Google site? 
Okay, excellent. So this is where I like to start to get to the library page. How do we get there? So you go to Google and you type in Lehman College. And so I'm here, I'll click on the Lehman College link. And that'll lead us to the Lehman College website. So notice that Rebecca and I had different ways of getting into the library website. So there's definitely more than one way to do it. Exactly. So from here on the top, there are these links, quick links, login, directory, library. Let's click on library. And that leads us to another way of getting to the library website. I'm gonna just X this little guy out here. So then, um, you'll see when we get in, there is a make a reservation now uh, link. That's what uh, Vanessa was talking about before. You need to make a reservation to come to the library, um, enter for whatever you wanna do. If you wanna study, um, cop, uh, scan a book, uh, request, a, you know, borrow a, a regular book to use, study space and computer use. Uh, but right now I wanna show you one search, which is right here, it's highlighted. And right below it is the one search bar. And you can use it to find books, articles, eBooks, media. So let's say you're looking for something, you're looking, you need to find books or articles on a topic. Um, I know we're all maybe tired of hearing it, uh, but I'm gonna type in COVID-19 and see what resources are available to you. So let's type in COVID-19 and I'm just gonna search. And let's see what pops up. So with COVID-19, we get over 2 million results. That's a lot of results. You can do a few things to narrow down that search if you want to, two million is overwhelming. But before we narrow down, let's just kind of go through what you see. So the first one says it's a book on COVID-19 and it's available online. When you see available online, that means it's an electronic book that you can access. Okay. Um, the next one says article. So this is an article on COVID-19. That's also, it's peer reviewed and it's available online. And when you keep scrolling down, you'll see different things like the first, you know, nine, 10, the first 10, they're all COVID-19. But you know what? I wanna add COVID-19 specific to New York, because this is where we live. And I wanna see how it's affected New York. So COVID-19 New York, let's see what happens. Okay. So as you can see, it went from 2 million results to 386,000 results, which is still lots of results, but you'll see the difference. COVID-19 was a general term. So we got everything COVID-19 from New York, probably the country, the, the world. So this is specific to New York. So it's narrowed down the search. And so this first one says the book COVID-19 in New York City. This is specific to New York City, an ecology of race and class oppression. So if you're interested in this book, you would click on available online. And once you click that, it directs you to try this link. So you're gonna click on let's go host, which is where the book is held. And when you scroll down, you have a description of the book. Keep on scrolling and you'll see the table of contents. Okay, so here we have, you can click on the chapter, premature death rate geography in New York City. And you can just scroll down and see all that information. Okay, it's also on the left-hand side, uh, uh, you'll see the chapters as well. So you can go to another chapter. I'm gonna X out of that. So that's a book. If you need to um, get articles 
what I'd suggest is on the left-hand side, there's a filter my results um, section. You're gonna scroll down. You can choose peer reviewed journals. You could also choose right below, it says resource type and choose articles. Because as you could see, um, there are different types of resources, newspaper articles, text, newsletter reports, but you wanna choose articles. And we have peer reviewed journals and you can apply the filters. And so these are articles that are peer reviewed and there's 29,000 of them on COVID-19 New York. And you can just kind of scroll through, see what's of interest. Uh, COVID-19 New York City pandemic notes from the first 30 days. Let's click on available online. We'll click on this link. And this is what a peer reviewed scholarly article looks like. We have the journal name, the title, the authors, keywords, and then the introduction. Okay, this says the COVID-19 pandemic has evoked dramatic global disruption as health and governmental agencies struggle to manage this historic medical event. And with peer reviewed articles, you'll see it has uh, references at the end. And that's how you get an article. Yes, I'd like to point out that Rebecca did not have to sign in with her CUNY First credentials because she's in her office. Exactly. So she's using um, the library's Wi Fi. So it recognizes her as a Lehman user. But if you're doing this from home, you would see that little prompt that Rebecca showed um, in our slides asking you to enter your CUNY First credentials, which are exactly the same ones you use to log into Blackboard, which you should all be doing by now, um, the same username and password. So that's how you would do it. It would look a little bit different from home. Right. Yeah. So, to go back, I want to go back to the library website again, just to show you. So that was one search to show you the research guides by subject. So here we click research guides. And, and, and actually, Rebecca, I'm sorry yeah, to interrupt go ahead, you. Go ahead. But would you point out actually how each little tab, when you click on it, changes the search that is performed in the live in the little search box there? Because sure. I know that can be confusing. Yeah. So let's say you know you're on one search. You'll see that it's highlighted, and when it's highlighted blue, that means that's the tab that it's going to search in. If you click on databases, it turns blue. And you can choose a particular database by title. The same as ebooks, it highlights, e journals, and then research guides. So, whichever one you want to search and make sure that it's highlighted and changes to blue. So, here in research guides, you can click browse research guides by subject. And it leads us to all of our research guides by subject and they're alphabetical. So here we have uh, African and American studies, um, biology, education, political science. So let me click on education. And in the education uh, title here, we have many guides under education. So if you need certification information, childhood education, um, you know, general education, all these things, um, scroll down, organizational leadership, restorative justice, just kind of scroll down and see what's of interest. But the general um, education guide is called education. So I'll click on that. And here you have an introduction. This is Allison Leader Quam, our education librarian who created this. And on the tabs, you'll see it has get background information, find books. And you get uh, links to different databases for electronic books, find journals. These are different databases. We didn't go uh, specifically too much into databases because we wanted you to look at one search first, which kind of searches all of the databases at once with, for most of the articles. 
find educational tests, uh, te uh, tests. And then she also has a cite your sources. So in education, it seems that they use APA, the APA style guide. Maybe you've heard of MLA or APA. Um, these are the guides, links that you can use to help you with your citation. And I think that's it on that. Vanessa, is there anything else I should show in here? Oh, I mean, I think that's fine. I wanted to leave, you know, we wanted to leave times for time for questions. Um, also, I'm just curious. I mean, um, definitely feel free to type any questions, but also just based on what we've just told you, if you want to type in the chat, how you think you would use the library um, this year, next year, you know, during your studies at Lehman, um you know we're, we're curious to know um that as well and if you have any specific questions definitely feel free to um share them in the chat as well or just unmute and throw them at us so i i had just had a quick question with um a lot of talk about um, misinformation or um, I guess in, in the articles in the databases, um, you know, how can the students be sure they're, they're getting um, kind of accurate information or, or, or not an article that is, is providing, um, you know, misinformation about, about any, any subject matter. Um. Yeah, that's a great question, Denny. Um, and, you know, it goes back to, and you will probably all notice as you progress in your studies that many of your professors will insist that you use library resources for your assignments and your papers. And part of the, the reason they want you to do that is because, um, you know, much of the information that is available through the library has gone through a vetting process, right? Um, you heard Rebecca talk about peer review. It's something you're going to hear a lot uh, from your professors. And basically what it means, sort of in a nutshell, um, it refers to um, research-based articles generally or academic um, scholarly articles where you have an expert on a subject writing, you know, um, let's say maybe they're reporting results from a research they conducted, um, and then they write up that report and it, it's published, you know, to be published in a journal or peer reviewed journal, um, as they're called, which is basically it's like a magazine, but for academic information, they publish articles. So in order for that article to get published in that journal, it needs to go through a process of where other the peers of the writer of the article. So basically other experts in the same subject um, read the report that they wrote and they provide feedback and they might you know, point out some inconsistencies in the research or they might point out some things that are not clear. You know, there's that process, the researcher might go back and sort of you know, rewrite certain things or maybe, you know, maybe it's not accepted because it's not good enough, it's not reliable enough. So that's one process that your professors rely on a lot. They rely on that peer review um, process as a way to, you know, verify that the information is more reliable. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't mean, you know, sometimes articles go through that process and then things, you know, it's found out that it's incorrect because especially in the sciences, because that's how, how science works. Um, sometimes, you know, new developments come up and, um, you know, the information changes. But, um, but generally, uh, your professors tend to trust that stamp of peer review. So that's one way of doing that. Having said that, um, I mean, we also provide all kinds of other different types of information. So it is good for you to learn um, how to be the judge of, you know, what's reliable, what's not reliable, what information you're going to trust. And that's tricky. That takes time. And during, um, you know, if all of you are freshmen, if I remember correctly, um, you will go through um, our first year library sessions or, in, you know, library sessions that go beyond just the basics of the library. But when you're taking the English 111 course, which I believe is required for all freshman students, you will have a library session that will focus on 
evaluating information and how you can learn to, um, you know, to decide what's reliable, what's less reliable, what are you going to trust? But generally, you know, there are certain markers that you look for, you know, who is the author who publishes information? Where was it published? What intention does it have? You know, so we go into a little bit more detail about that. So that, that will come later, but it's a great question, Denny. Thank you. I put in a link to one of our guides. Let me do it again. I don't think it went through. Um, and it's on evaluating information. Actually, it's called writing research papers, but the, the, the tab is evaluating uh, sources using certain criteria um, like authority, accuracy, purpose, and currency. And it's a short video. You know, you could see it on your own, but it gives you a little more details about critically evaluating sources. Thank you, Denny. I also see in the chat that um, one of the students says um, they would use the library to study, which is a perfectly legitimate use of the library. Um, like I said, right now it's a little bit limited, but it's still available and we hope to make it a little bit more available as the semester progresses. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, pandemic provided, we can fully reopen um, next semester because, you know, we know that um, our students rely on, on the, the use of the space to have quiet, peace, um, a place where you can focus and concentrate. So we are aware of that. Um, you know, we're just kind of limited at the moment because of the circumstances. But it's it's a it's a very popular use of the library. Mm -hmm. um, someone also asked where they can watch this recording, Denny. Where can they? Uh, so yeah. So yeah. Um, the recording will be posted on uh, the Lehman Campus Lab. So that's where um, the Office of Campus Life um, posts their events. Um, so uh, one of the great things about Campus Life is that you're able to show past events. So um, the flyer and um, the listing will, will not go away. And under the description, it will be updated with the link to the video um, and the PowerPoint to this. And then um, I will post the, um, the link to that um, on the chat. And then students can navigate there and you can see that this event is posted, but you can also see all the upcoming events that are put on by the Office of Campus Life and um, our different clubs and organizations that they are still doing events virtually. So they are the, um, you can register for it. It'll be added to your calendar. Um, and you'll get a reminder um, that the event is coming up so you can attend. And it's the, it's the college lab site, Lean College Campus Lab, is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's the uh, link. I believe yeah. it's not gonna be posted right now, this very second, but um, give us a little time. Yep, um, but, by the end of the week, the, the video will be posted. Um, and that students can view when it's convenient to them and, and, and um, go to the section that they're looking for. And then any other questions, please type in the chat or even just, you know, how you think you would use the library. Oh, Danny, you already posted that link. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Okay, well, I want to put in. I'm also, yes, I'm my, sorry. I just wanted to share yeah. also a little, oh, yes. you know, they'll get a copy of the slides, but we also provided some links where you can explore on your own. Um, I know it, it, this might be a, too much information right now and it might be a little overwhelming, but on your own time and as you need it, you know, as things come up and you have questions, um, of course, the library website is the, you know, the go to. We have an FAQs there, uh, but we also have. Um, sort of video tutorials on different things that are, you know, things we know um, students will need or often ask about. Um, you'll see Rebecca in many of them. Um, and, um, and then, you know, just various different places where you can, um, you know, find information um, that you need about the library and then also some things that are about the college but are related to the library. And, and like I said, I cannot stress this enough, you can always ask for help. Um, so go to the chat or send us an email 
Um, and when we finally fully reopen, you'll find us there at the reference desk and you can come in and ask us um, your questions. That's what we're here for. And I just put in my email, um, Rebecca Darazola at Lehman, and I spelled it incorrectly. Let me do that again. <laughs> so if you want to contact me, Rebecca Darazola at Lehman. And I did it again. <laughs> man dot cuny dot edu okay so that's my do you want me to yes okay there's a comma that I just put a period i'm sorry i don't know what's going on right now but... <laughs> uh, yeah. okay oh i see um somebody asked if we have a meeting every wednesday or just today um this is um, this meeting is for just today, uh, this orientation. But like I said, you can always request a meeting with a librarian um, by using the form that's included on the um, in the PowerPoint. And also if you go to the library website and you click on Ask Us, um, make a research consultation appointment. If you click on that, it will take you to a form where you can fill in your information um, and a librarian will contact you to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting if you're interested in doing that. Um, generally, it's done when you have, um, you're doing more in-depth research, but, if, but feel free also to reach out that way if you want to just have a one-on-one -on -one session about how to use the library, we're happy to provide that as well, even if you don't have a specific topic in mind just yet. So definitely. So um, for the students, again, you can ask a question um, in the chat. But um, as we noted, I think we're going to move to um, close the, the, the session. Um, I definitely wanted to thank uh, Vanessa and Rebecca to, for really sharing um, all the, the great resources that the library um, has to offer our students. And, and really, they're here. Um, to help you uh, make sure that you're able to make very strong arguments in whatever academic field um, that, that you're studying, right? Um, one of the things that um, I always tell students at, at Lehman is that there's a whole army of, of individuals, of staff, faculty members that all we wanna do is to ensure that you succeed and you're able to um, cross uh, the graduation stage. So um, really, um, no question is uh, a question um, so small that you can't ask us. Um, I think we all love working with students. It, it's what we chose a, a, as a profession. So um, we love to kind of walk students through um, all these issues and, and, and have them be as fluid as possible when na navigating this community. So we have tons and tons of years of um, experience at Lehman. And, and all we want to do is impart that with you. So um, thank you for joining us. Thank you to um, both our, our friends at, at the library um, for the presentation. Um, we hope that everyone has a great day. Thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Yes. Bye, everyone. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you virtually.